Hello, my name is Nathan Olson. I am a 3D artist specializing in characters and weapons. Today we'll be looking at AccuRig and ActorCore and how they are used to help us get the perfect portfolio shot, apply some animations to our models, rig our models. I've been doing this since 2019, so I've picked up a few tips and tricks along the way that I'm going to share with you. I hope it helps make things a bit easier and shed some light on a few questions you may have. Enjoy! As ZBrush opens in centimeters, we're going to leave it in centimeters. You'll notice here it shows millimeters on the scale master. It is actually in centimeters, so we'll stick with that. Scale set to 1 for all subtools. In the right hand side, we'll notice there's a size rollout under geometry. The size of this guy is almost 10 centimeters, and that works great in AccuRig. I've always found, so we'll just leave it as is. All right, let's take a look around here. So polygon count, I've got 32, roughly 32,000 polygons. That's double for triangles. That gives you 60,000 triangles. You want to stick below 350,000 triangles or 150,000 polygons. The reason for this is it's the best sweet spot for functioning like your rigs and stuff in actor AccuRig. Um, if not, it will slow down a fair bit. So stick with that. <laughs> you want to make sure your character is UV'd before you export this guy because you're going to want to apply textures to it. So hit polygroups all on and unwrap all for your condensed sub tools. Next, we'll take a look at Matcat Baker. These are my settings. I suggest you using them. They're curated. They work very well. Get those ID maps out so you can tell your textures where to go on your low poly when you're generating your textures. Now for export settings, I've got selected, bin, and smooth normal set. Selected will export each condensed subtool at a time so your UV maps will stay in check. So there was my condensed subtool. Here are the actual subtools that I will be exporting. In the right side top, there's five of them. One's hidden by the top bar there, but there are actually five subtools. I find this best for showcasing a game model. You might want to condense a bit more for clothing and body would be what you'd like to stick to. Here we are in AccuRig. We're going to force symmetry. You'll notice my total triangle count up in the top there is just under 60. Like I was explaining earlier, 30,000 polygons equals 60,000 tries. We want to stick below 335, geez, 350,000. So let's get this guy rigged. Now we're going to place our joints. Usually it catches it on the first try, but this is a exaggerated proportion mesh. So I'm not completely surprised that a couple of the joints are out of place. That's on me. This, this tool is so wicked. It makes it so easy, so quick to generate your rig. Couple adjustments here, couple adjustments there, and you're all set. Let's get those fingers generated. All right, I've only got four fingers, including a thumb. So quick. Might be a couple jankies because I've got weird hands. Yeah, I thought so. So the, the pinky and the knuckles are kind of off. The reason for that is, is because I modeled them in separate pieces. If it was modeled as one hand, it's much easier for AccuRig to uh, rig. <laughs> um, but with separate fingers from the hands, you want to yank the top knuckles into the hand or the animation will make the fingers fly out when it's when he's closing his hand and opening his hand they'll fly out of the the palm so make sure you do that easy fix all 
All right, let's finalize this guy. See what we get. Oh, very smooth, very smooth transitions. There's not, there's no stretching that I can see. It just kind of sways back and forth effortlessly. I caught the hair as well on the back. I'm all far enough out for it to etch. A pose looks good. T pose looks good. All right, let's get this guy uploaded. All right, here we are in actor core. We're gonna want a sweet animation for this tutorial. Something with kicks, flips, punches, all of it. It's really limitless with this website, it's fantastic. So we got our packs up top here amongst some deals and stuff. Hand-to-hand -hand combat is a really good one for getting that perfect portfolio pose. They have a lot of, uh, a lot of different animations in there. So let's grab our uploaded actor and get something set up here. Type in kicks. Oh, hold on. <laughs> drop it like it's hot, drop it like it's hot. <laughs> This one's pretty sweet, actually, from this little preview I can see. To back it up so we can get a bigger preview. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's not quite what I'm after for my portfolio shot of this guy, but that is sweet. I would use it in a different project for sure. Kicks, flips, punches. That's the one. Like, look how good Accurig did on the rigging. There's no stretching, there's no distortion. It got all the little itty bitty bits of the model. It's perfect. All right, so we're going to download export motion only. No, we want that off. Grab our uploaded character for download target, target application. Blender profile is what we need. We've already got the latest version, of course, 60 FPS, because 60 FPS, or I should say more FPS is better. You can mirror your animation here, very useful. You can move in place, also very useful if you have constraints for your area. All right, in your lower left, you'll see the download progress. It has completed. If your antivirus is like mine, you may have to download it twice just by clicking on the bottom left box there. It will download to two folders once you've extracted it, motion and your motionless actor. Inside of Blender, we'll import him, the motionless actor first. He comes in with a skeleton, and the main model itself, there will be no animation with him. We have to apply it separately, which is very easily done. Import the motion. Navigate to our folder here, motion. All right, now we've got both skeletons. One's a little bit different than the other. We've got our animation at the bottom. The skeleton moves, but the body doesn't. Easy to fix. We'll go to animation, workplace. We'll select all of our keyframes. You don't have to select them all the way down. Just select the ones that are visible in your little thing and we'll catch them all. Make sure they're unlocked, of course, or it won't really do a whole lot. Just by hitting tab a couple times, you'll see in the lower left there, the lock toggles. Just make sure it's unlocked. And now we'll do it again, unlocked, paste it over. Now don't worry about the original blank frame that came with this guy. These will paste over it, occupy the same scale, rotation, and yeah, that looks really good. Yeah, that's great. Wow, well done.
All right, let's get this cleaned up. So we'll delete the old skeleton. We will select the armature and hit A. I've deleted the camera and light for this tutorial. So I can simply hit A and select everything without getting those. Just to be on the safe side. Okay, so we're gonna download everything to our folder where we have our original files stored. Call him future proof with an M to clarify the motion model, part of the model. All right, now we're here in Marmoset. Let's clean up this a little bit. So I went ahead and generated my textures from those ID maps that I was talking about earlier beforehand. I won't be going over texture creation in this tutorial. So we simply went to our folder, imported our model from where we just saved it out in Blender. Looks, looks good. Head over to the animation tab. Oh, yep, animation came with. Let's just adjust it a little bit here. I think I'm gonna have to adjust the timeline or else I'll get pieces of the animation after the original one plays out. Let's get these textures set up. So I generate my textures in Marmoset. You're free to use whatever software you like. It pretty much, as far as I know, is all compatible with Marmoset, as long as you saved a certain file. Presets, like PNG or TIFF, or there's so many of them that it accepts, so it's really, really good. All right, so that's where we want to stop. What is it? Four, two, nine. So this way we won't get any clipping. The animation will just play as one sequence for our portfolio and that'll be it. Perfect. Let's loop it, make sure we didn't get any, any randoms. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Go to the original, or I should say the classic workspace. Turn off wireframe. Now I set up my environment beforehand to make this next step quicker. All my settings are applied in the render part. Get some lights for a nice sheeny glow to him, blue sheeny glow, but feel free to use whatever you want. All right, so to render these guys out, you go up here. You render all videos or F5 hotkey. I tend to stick with my hotkeys. It makes things a lot smoother and quicker when it comes time for production. We want to get a portfolio image or still image as well. Let's uh, adjust the animation until we get something we like here. That's pretty good. Yeah, that, that looks real good. <laughs> I like that a lot actually. It's a nice keyframe. All right, so we render a still this time, F11, another hotkey, which is good for us. Quick, quick, quick. And it's rendering and you're done. Sweet guys, see you later.